Hello physicists. Today we're going to be looking at the 10 commands of National 5 physics exams. By that I mean the 10 different question types you're likely to be asked in the written section of the exam paper. So let's start with number one, state, name or give. In these sort of questions you only need to present information in a very brief form. There's no need for any further explanation. So for example, state what is meant by the term half-life. You just need to say the time taken for the activity of a radioactive source to half. One mark. Two, describe. In a describe question, you need to provide a statement about what's happening, but no need to explain why. So for example, the graph of a boat's motion is shown. Describe the motion of the boat between 25 and 450 seconds. So you can look at the graph, you can see it's a horizontal line, and that indicates that the boat is moving with a constant speed or a constant velocity. Number three, explain. In an explain question, you need to tell a marker why something's happening. For example, x-rays can cause ionization. Explain what is meant by ionization. So I would say an atom becomes electrically charged by losing or gaining electrons. Number four, determine or calculate. These are number questions. And in these questions, you need to work out a number from given facts, figures, or information. Now, calculate questions usually need you to use one of the formulas from the formula sheet. A determine question usually needs you to work out a number using some other sort of mathematical technique. So, for example, a worker has a mass of 80 kilograms and on a particular day absorbs 7.2 millijoules of energy from the X-ray machine. Calculate the absorbed dose received by the worker. So, these are worth three marks traditionally. This is what we call a standard three mark question. And uh, you might want to have a look at another video I've posted about standard three markers. But anyway, we get the mark for writing the correct formula, inserting the numbers correctly into the formula, and then giving a correct answer complete with its units. Here's another example. A beta source used during testing has a half-life of 36 hours. The initial activity of the beta source is 12 kilo becquerels. Determine the activity of the source 144 hours later. So, I would do this. I would say, initially, the activity of the source is 12 kilo becquerels after zero hours. 36 hours later, it's halved to six. Another 36 hours, that makes 72, it's halved to three. Another 36 hours, that's another, um, that takes us to 108 hours, it's halved to 1.5 kilobecquerels. And another 36 hours takes us to 144 hours, it's halved again to 0 0.75 kilobecquerels. So that's our final answer. The activity is 0 0.75 kilobecquerels. The marks, were awarded for showing that you knew to half the activity. So any evidence of halving 12, 6, 3, 1.5, 0 0.75 got you one mark. And then the second mark comes from being able to ascertain that you needed to half it four times. And then the final mark was for the final answer. Number five. Estimate. You need to come up with an approximate value for something, and often there will be some tolerance in the marking instructions. So experiments are carried out on a radioactive isotope using one sample of a radio radioactive isotope. The number of counts per minute is recorded over a period of 12 hours, and the following graph obtained. Using the graph estimate the average background count in counts per minute. So looking at the graph, you can see it falls from around about 140 
counts per minute down to about 20 and it levels out there. So the background count rate is around about 20 counts per minute. In this case, it's an estimate because the background count rate is constantly fluctuating. So we can't say it's definitely 20. It might sometimes be 21. It might sometimes be 19 or somewhere around about there. Often these estimate questions involve taking data from a graph. Number six, justify. You need to state a conclusion and give reasons to support your answer. So the rating plate on a food blender is shown. The plug on all modern appliances in the UK are fitted with fuses rated at either three amps or 13 amp fuse. Determine the rating of the fuse fitted in the plug of the blender. Justify your answer by calculation. Four marks. So it's a three amp fuse. That gets me a mark just for making that statement. And you will probably know that since the power rating of this food blender is less than about 700 watts, that tends to be a three amp fuse. More than around about 700 watts, we probably use a 13 amp fuse. So we can probably get that three amps uh, just by guesswork. However, it says justify your answer by calculation. So I need to work out what current is gonna flow in this food blender. I'm given the power and I'm given the voltage, so I use P equals IV to calculate the current. Turns out it's 1.3 amps. Since 1.3 amps is less than three amps, then a three amp fuse would be sufficient. So it's just a standard three mark question after that. One mark for the formula, one mark for the working, and one mark for the answer to give us the total four marks. But I was able to get the three amp fuse mark just by writing that without the justification. There is another type of justify question though, like this one here, where a technician transmits pulses of ultrasound into the brass at position P as shown. The time between the ultrasound pulse being transmitted and received at position P is greater than the time recorded at position X in a steel sample. Error in this question, a steel sample was shown. State whether the speed of ultrasound in brass is less than, equal to, or greater than the speed of ultrasound in steel. You must justify your answer. Slightly different wording. It says you must justify. So if I say the speed of sound in brass is less than steel, that awards me no marks because I have not attempted to justify my answer. And it says, I must justify. So I need to make some sort of reasoning for that because the sound takes longer to travel the same distance. In the marking instructions, this is what's written. The first mark, the one for the speed of sound in brass is less than steel, can only be awarded if a justification is attempted. So a correct justification along with the correct effect gets me two marks. The correct effect and uh, slightly incorrect justification will get me one mark. The correct effect, but no attempt at justifying, gets me no marks at all, even though I've got the, what would be the first mark correct. If I write down the incorrect effect. So if I said the speed of sound in brass is faster than steel, even if I made the correct justification, I would get no marks. Or indeed, if I wrote um, the sound takes longer to travel in the brass, so the justification may be correct. If I haven't written the speed of sound in brass is less than steel, I still get no marks. These tend to be A mark questions because they're a little bit harder to get the full marks for. Number seven, show that. In a show that question, you must use physics and mathematics to prove something. For example, a given value. All steps included in the stated answer must be shown because you have to show that. So for example, the ultrasound pulses used have a period of four microseconds. Show that. 
the frequency of the ultrasound pulses is 2.5 times 10 to the power of 5 hertz. So I take my formula, F equals 1 over T, straight from the formula sheet. I insert the number 4 microseconds into that formula and write down my answer. And that gets me two marks. I will only get that second mark if I've written the final answer, even though the final answer is given in the question. And I need to have the formula written down as well. Just jumping straight into the working is not acceptable. Number eight, predict. You need to make an informed suggestion about what might happen based on available information. So, the student heats the water and records the following readings of pressure and temperature. Predict the pressure reading which would be obtained if the student was to cool the gas to 253 Kelvin. So this is quite a lot to do for one mark. And it doesn't really guide you about how to do it. You have four values for pressure, four values for temperature, and you've got to predict what the, the pressure would be at another temperature. So you could do it just by looking at the values and, and a, bit of, uh, a bit of logical reasoning. So if I look at it and it says, ah, the temperature rises each time by 20 degrees, and the pressure, well, it goes from 101 to 107, and then 107 to 116, and then 116 to 122, so it rises by six, then nine by six, so on average, it rises for by about seven Kelvin. So 253 Kelvin is about 40 Kelvin below 293 Kelvin. So that's two 20 Kelvins worth below. And 20 Kelvin is about seven, um, seven pa uh, kilopascals. So it's going to be about 14 kilopascals uh, less. So 87 kilopascals would be my answer. There's a lot of thinking there for one mark. And we don't get any credit for any of the working. We only get a mark for the answer. They would have accepted any single value between 83 kilopascals and 89 kilopascals, however. Another way you could have done it is just by a straightforward calculation and realizing that we've got a variety of pressures and temperatures, so pressure one and temperature one, and we could do a, a gas law a formula question here. P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. 101 over 293, just taking any of the pressures and their corresponding temperatures equals pressure two over 253, so pressure to 101 over 293 times 253 makes 87 kilopascals. And that's probably actually an easier way to do it. Although it's still a lot of work for one mark, it gets me a, a, an answer. I don't get any credit again for the working, unfortunately. Because the pressure and temperature are not going up in completely uniform steps each time, you'll get slightly different values if you take uh, the other values as your pressure one and temperature one, which is why there's a range of values uh, acceptable. Number nine, suggest. You need to apply your knowledge and understanding of physics to a new situation. A number of responses are acceptable. Marks will be awarded for any suggestion that's supported by real physics. So in this example, somebody's heating a metal block with a heater and measuring the temperature over a period of time. And it's found that there are energy losses and they obtain the wrong specific heat capacity at the end of the experiment. Suggest a possible improvement that would reduce heat losses or energy losses. So probably the sensible thing would be to wrap the metal block in an insulating material. What else did they suggest? Um, insulating the metal block was one, or switching the heater on for a shorter time was another option. 
but it says accept any suitable suggestion. So something like using shorter wires with less resistance, so less energy is lost in the wires, or there are probably countless other things that might be um, might be possible here. If it's a reasonable, sensible suggestion, you can probably pick up the mark. And lastly, number 10, using your knowledge of physics. These are open-ended questions, and you must apply your skills, knowledge, and understanding of physics to respond appropriately to the problem or situation presented. For example, by making statement of principles involved and or relationship of equations, and applying those to respond to the problem or situation. So, Here's an example of an open-ended question. Space exploration involves placing astronauts in difficult environments. Despite this, many people believe the benefits of space exploration outweigh the risk. Using your knowledge of physics, comment on the benefits and or risks of space exploration. So these sort of questions, there is no definite correct answer. The marking scheme will say something like this. So if you demonstrate no understanding of the physics involved, you get no marks. If you demonstrate a bit of understanding, you get one mark. Reasonable understanding, two marks. A good level of understanding, three marks. In this question, you might want to comment on things like uh, the benefits of space exploration. So some of the inventions that have come out of um, space exploration that you've maybe talked about in your course. And then you might want to talk about some of the risks of space exploration, the dangers of um, of using rocket fuel, the dangers of re-entry, uh, the dangers of cosmic radiation in space, the difficulty in getting food and water into space for the astronauts, etc. There's all sorts of things that you could write. Okay, so these are the 10 commands of your National Five Physics exam. And these are how you're going to answer these sort of questions when it comes up. Hope this was helpful and I'll talk to you again another time.